Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. Amen. May we all confess together. Through the word movement, we, we be able to raise the partisan. Today's title is This Age is Tyrannus Hall. We're currently exploring the words of Acts every Sunday. Last Sunday, through the sermon, we looked at Paul's second mission journey up to his arrival in Ephesus. In today's passage, Acts 19, it provides a detailed account of the central stage of Apostle Paul's third mission journey, which was his ministry in Ephesus. Paul spent three years in Ephesus during his five years of his third mission's journey, underlying the strategic importance of Ephesus in his efforts for missions. In fact, during his second mission's journey, Paul had briefly visited Ephesus. During that visit, he testified of the gospel to the Jewish synagogue, and many people asked him to stay longer. He received many requests. However, Paul left stating that if it is God's will, he would return to Ephesus, leaving Priscilla and Aquila there. He eventually returned to this region during his third mission's journey. Ephesus was a significant trade city of its time and was the capital of Asia under the Roman rule. It was a city so advanced that it had a grand theater capable of accommodating 24,000 people. And the famous temple Artemis and was one of the seven wonders of the ancient world. And you must think about it. It was 2,000 years ago. Additionally, it boasted a gymnasium, music hall, library, large shopping complexes, and massive public baths. 2,000 years ago, it's unimaginable. A couple of decades ago, I went to Moscow in Russia and I rode the subway. And the subway was so deep. If you look at it from the top, you cannot see the end. For us, it was that we were riding the buses, but a hundred years ago, they had subways. I was so shocked. How can we fall so behind 2,000 years ago? Ephesus had the grand multi malls back then. So Ephesus was a dazzling and prosperous city to the extent that it was a dream for many women in the world to visit Ephesus at least once in their lives. It was the hub of commerce and transportation. However, spiritually, it was very dark, filled with idolatry and superstition. In short, it was a stronghold of the dark culture described in Ephesians 3, 6, and 11. Of Genesis 3, 6, and 11. Therefore, through the letter of Ephesians that Apostle Paul sent to the Ephesians church, he repeatedly emphasized the need to engage in spiritual warfare. Even if you go to church, of course it's so for non-believers, but many people, they're fighting the physical fight. It's about Genesis 3, 6, and 11. It's that conflict. They don't know of the spiritual fight. They don't even know of that term. It's our denomination that uses the term spiritual fight. But even if you go to Yohan Church, many people still don't know what the spiritual fight is. If we are asked 
Did you ever fight the spiritual battle? They don't understand. They are unable to fight the spiritual fight. They just fight with their pride, their emotions. Oh, these are the words of Satan that is attacking me through that person trying to shake me up. But we have to know that it is a spiritual fight, that God, that Satan, that the pulpit message, this is the image of a person who fights the spiritual fight. But for most people, it's about my emotions, my pride. So even amongst couples, if you fight the spiritual battle, you don't have to fight the physical battle. Then what will happen? You would just say, oh Lord, and it's Galatians 2.20. So there's no need to fight, amen? Pastor, I always succeed in the spiritual battle, hallelujah. But for most people, it's bloodshed. They give scars and receive scars. But it's a spiritual fight. So Paul repetitively says this. This is said to the spiritual people. For those who are not saved, this is not understood. And then Ephesians 4, 22-24 reads, Put off your old self which belongs to your former manner of life and is corrupt through deceitful desires and be renewed in the spirit of your minds and put off the new self created after the likeness of God in true righteousness and holiness. Amen? A new self. Are you thrilled? When you listen to the word, are you happy or do you feel bad? Putting on the new self. This is what Paul emphasized. Ephesians 5 8. For at one time you were darkness, but now you are the light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. Walk as children of light. Walk as children of light. Think as children of light. See as children of light. Because people are always within darkness. Are you going to think within darkness? But you are the children of light. Ephesians 6 12. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers over this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. You always have to fight with evil, but you fight with people. You have to be able to interpret it spiritually, winning it with the word, not with your pride, your thoughts, or emotions. Satan makes it so that you would hold on to that and have your colors of Genesis chapter 3, 6, and 11 come out of your old self when you are not saved. Not only in Paul's time, but even today, we are engaged in spiritual warfare against the inward strongholds of the world, star culture, and idolatry. Satan is taking hold of that. So look at the field, the sky art hall. Even yesterday, I didn't know what they were doing, but they were young adults. And they would not greet me. There were so many young adults in the elevator, but they all went to the Galilee Hall, and it was that there was a sign event of a celebrity. And there was one person, there was a great line, and it was a signing event of a celebrity. It is the dark culture, the idol culture. It is raised in the hearts as the strong, firm partisans. How can we 
break this down. It is called the spiritual battle. You must build the fortress of Christ alone with the three onlys, opening our spiritual eyes. This morning, I saw a text message. This person was raised as a remnant at our church and is currently in Silicon Valley. Pastor, my heart pounds looking at today's passage and pulpit title. This age is Tyrannus Hall. This person is very passionate in college missions while doing her business. No one knows, but she's doing a lot of different ministries. She's different, very devotional. And she went to Stanford. But for the campus of Stanford, she has a very passionate heart. And then there was a child of a missionary who went to Stanford and they were trying to connect and call each other, but they were not intact wanting to preach the gospel, wanting to raise the partisan. So when you look at today's passage, it provides a concrete example of how to fight and win in this spiritual battle. It was through Paul's ministry centered around the Hall of Tyrannus. Paul preached there for a remarkable two years. This place held significant importance in Paul's missions work. The name Tyrannus may refer to the owner of the building at that time, or it might be named after a famous philosopher of the era. However, what is clear is that it was a public space where many people gathered for lectures. It was a public location. In the absence of regular lectures at the Hall of Tyrannus, Paul rented the place and held evangelistic teachings and meetings. For two years he had done this. This period can be considered as the peak of Paul's missions work. During this time, not only in the Ephesians church, but the gospel also spread throughout Asia. And several churches were founded in the region, including the Colossian church mentioned in the book of Colossians and the seven churches in Asia mentioned in the book of Revelation. Acts 19.8 reads, and he entered the synagogue after the three months, spoke boldly, reasoning and persuading them about the kingdom of God. As the title of today's sermon suggests, Yohan Church must be the Tyrannus Hall of the sage. Every one of you must become a minister of the Tyrannus vow. One by one, that is why you must take on the covenantal challenge so that everyone who lives in our region, people, and 237 nations around the world can live having the evidence of hearing the word of the Lord. This is the final mission given to us. What embodies this is the theme of three movement. We are doing this right now. What is the Tyrrhenia Saul? It is this movement. I bless all believers of Yohan Church in the name of the Lord that we may become a covenant community that realistically fulfills the role of the Tyrrhenia Saul of this era and bear witness to possess all the nations. Number one, concentrative word movement. 
verses 1 to 2. It was in the spring of 1953, A.D. 53, that Apostle Paul set off on his third mission journey. So what was the characteristic of Paul's ministry? It is visiting that place again and raising them up spiritually. At this time, he had split with Timothy from Antioch and moved north by land, just as they did during the second mission's journey. Acts 18.23 states that Paul's team went through the lands of Galatia and Pygria, one of after the other, strengthening all the disciples. One of the characteristics of Paul's ministry is that he visited the places that he had visited again and worked to spiritually strengthen them. In the Oversea Evangelism Camp, we are currently conducting plays this role as well. The same goes for the Team of Three movement, which is the core of the church's ministry in the year 2023. After he sowed the seeds of the gospel, Paul did not leave it alone to grow or not, but somehow made sure that they grew properly. If he could go, he would go. If he could not go, he would send another minister. If that was not possible, he would send letters to provide spiritual training. This is why we formed a team of three to carry out the Start 10,000 movement. A new family was brought in, and the spiritual focus of Apostle Paul was to take care of that one soul who is more precious than the whole world, so that, it can po so that he can properly be rooted in the gospel. There are many people who don't go to church because they've received trials and they lose hold of this blessing and are living pitiful lives. So it's not that they should just come to church, but they should succeed in worship and be rooted in worship. Being able to listen to the word and having influence of the word in your lives. Those who are unable to influence the word, they are just religious people, not Christians. Now the ministry for the half of the second year has begun. And we hope that all regions, organizations, departments, committees center around the new Family Committee will take on the challenge with the passion so that the Team of Three movement can become more active. Of course, there are many people who we are meeting, but for most people, it's that they're falling asleep. They're very quiet in the Team of Three. But Elder Doisab, he's very active. So I pray, Lord, may all of them be awake. Doing the prayer movement, evangelism movement. Turning the church around. Having the paradigm shift to the church that devotes praise. It is going to take place. So when I give a role to a system pastor, pastor, I say, may you be able to make a paradigm shift in that committee, in that ministry. But many people, they don't understand. 
They don't have that faith. They don't have that assurance, passion, or courage. They don't have that experience. So that's why all life long they go through such hardships. Because God does not receive what is filled with motives. Whatever you do, you must not have motives. If you have motives, it is all point zero. He says, I don't know you. You went to church all your life, but you hear, I don't know you. I cast out demons, but I don't know you because it was all done out of motives. For the believers, starting from today, may you be able to challenge on passionately. Paul arrived in the Ephesus while doing his work, and Paul met some disciples here, but did not know about the Holy Spirit or baptism in the name of the Lord, as they only knew about John's baptism, knowing that only John's baptism means that only one knows the stage of repenting one's sins, realizing one's mistake, and repenting one's sins. They did not know anything about the Holy Spirit in Mark's upper room on the Pentecost in Jerusalem. At that time, the internet was not developed at its now, so the news was very slow. But even today, people are like this. At that time, it was so slow where the news was to spread. Even years it took. For decades, people would not know. It's still like that right now. There are 5,000 races. 5,000 people groups. That is why we take on the covenantal challenge of evangelizing the two three seven nations and five thousand people groups. You must understand that simply feeling remorse about our sins does not make us Christians. So I read something last week and this person did not have hands and this person was on his stomach crawling whether it rained or snowed going to morning service to the cathedral he doesn't have hands legs and he's not even able to see but he goes to morning prayer service but is there the answer where does it say in the bible does it that it says to pray to mary if your spirit is ill then you cannot understand with this passion, pulling with his stomach, and one day he died. Dear St. Mary, is St. Mary the Savior? The only Savior is Jesus Christ. With that passion and diligence. There are so many people like this. 5,000 people groups, 237 nations, what are we going to do? These people do not know the way to salvation. They don't know how to receive salvation. But now you receive salvation. You listen to this great gospel. But you're bounded upon your problems of what is yours. Wasting time. And the church wants to do the 237 nations and 5,000 people groups. But you're not doing anything. Then will God listen to your prayers? I would not even be able to do that. Or bless you. The church is crying out. May all believers be able to rise. What we must see is realizing, understanding, and realizing our sins. 
of religion is like that. Repentance, in the sense of the Bible, that it teaches means turning away from sin and turning completely back to God. The way to do this is by confessing that I am a sinner and acknowledging that Jesus is the Christ, the Lord of my life. So we say, let us evangelize to the 337 nations. Isn't that our guilt? Gospelizing to the multi-ethnics in Korea, if you don't have any heart for them. Isn't that a fake? Doing missions, a missions church. There are multi-ethnics here. So the young adults are in the forefront. They're going to camp right now in the major cities for the multi-ethnics. May all the departments be able to rise. And then we are going to go to the three to seven nations. We have to do it together at once. So what is this? This is called receiving him into your life, commonly referred to as receiving Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Following the pattern in today's passage, it involves being baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. This is when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. It is referred to as baptism in the Holy Spirit. However, at that time, they did not have the advantage of knowing the spiritual truth through the written scriptures as we do now. So speaking in tongues and prophesying became signs, at, signs that the Holy Spirit had come upon them. However, today we can know for sure through God's word, it's not necessary to speak in tongues or have specific emotional experience to receive the Holy Spirit. It might happen, but even if it doesn't, one should not doubt that they have received the Holy Spirit. The moment that you receive the Lord Jesus Christ, you received the Holy Spirit. John 1, 12, to all who did receive him, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, accepting the Lord as your Savior. I was born a Christian. It doesn't matter. What is important is if you really believe. 1 Corinthians 3.16 Do you not know that you are God's temple and that God's Spirit dwells in you? Why do you not know? Why are you confused when you are a child of God? You fool. That is what it's saying. You are a temple of God the moment you accepted Jesus Christ. Receiving Christ is becoming a child of God, and this is when the Holy Spirit imparts. In verse 7 of today's passage, it is mentioned that there were 12 men who have been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. These individuals later became workers in the Ephesian church. Amongst them, it is presumed that there was a man named Ephesians, who Paul introduces as the first comfort to Christ from Asia in Romans 16.5. After this incident, Paul went to the Jewish synagogue in Ephesus to boldly proclaim and boldly, boldly proclaimed the message of the kingdom of God for three months. And some received, the mis some received this message well, but others whose hearts were hardened and who opposed to the preaching of the gospel emerged. Those who did not believe and those who criticized and those who did not obey being a tackle of the gospel movement. At this point, Paul made a significant decision. 
Instead of engaging in arguments, debates, and conflicts with them, he quietly left and adopted a new strategy by entering into a place called the Hall of Trainius. In this place, Paul taught daily for two years, expounding on the message just as a teacher would explain a subject. In other words, he used the Old Testament scriptures to convey the message of Jesus Christ. This continued for two years. And as a result, people throughout Asia heard the word of the Lord. This concentrated teaching effort established a firm stronghold of Christ in the region. So we can learn the essential principles of the word movement from Paul's ministry in the Hall of Tyrannius. The first is that there should be a set time and place for consistent nurturing. The word movement, according to the Western text of the Old of the New Testament, Paul preached at the Hall of Trainus from 11 to 4 p.m. This was actually during the nap time called Sista. It was so hot during the daytime that everybody who was working stopped during this time. And they took naps because it was so hot. They stopped everything that they were doing. If you go to a hot nations, it's like that. They have nap times. Then everything closes down at that time. But Paul took advantage of this time to spread the word. This had spread throughout Ephesus, and people were able to hear Paul's message if they went to the Hall of Tyrannus at that appointed time. And what is that? That is the upper room movement. What is that? That is the 4,000 Bartism movement. This kind of hall of trainers should be built on the fields of a region's workplaces, businesses, and schools. The word out that if we go there at that certain time each week, we can receive the word of God that could save our lives. That is the 4,000 partisan movement. Second, it is that there must be a messenger who can continue. Like Paul. Paul preached the word every day for two years straight. And it can't be done without a message. The centerpiece was obviously Jesus Christ, but he would also quote from the Old Testament and make various applications to the upper room movement, to other people. When you preach the gospel, the Holy Spirit works. Does the Holy Spirit work upon when you play cards? The evil spirits work. It's that not when you're speaking well, but even if you stutter when you preach the gospel. So especially with testimonies from the missions field, those who came to the Hall of Trainus would have received realistic answers. So I hope that all believers of Yoan Church will grow as ministers of the word like this. You should try up a room. You should try team ministry upon the received grace. Just relay that. Is that so? with the word that you received. You must do at least one of it. At least one upper room movement. If so, then you can not not pray. You doing upper room movement every day? Then you are an educator a assistant pastor because you're always awake in the word. 
mission homes, specialized churches, and regional church ministries should be activated in our family region and fields of business. For those who don't do it, they are just spectators, just sitting down. They must really change in front of God. You must learn how to do the acceptance message if you don't know. In front of God, there are no excuses to be made. Psychologist A. H. Maslow said, the most beautiful aspect of people is the realization of the potential capacities within themselves. I believe that there is an inexhaustible spiritual capacity within the believers of Yuan Church. There are souls out there that will come alive when you share the word that you have heard and the grace that you have received. Please realize that capacity. All has been prepared. May you be able to put that into action. Making time, having that devotion. I bless all believers of V1 Church in the name of the Lord to be the absolute disciples of Christ who exert spiritual presence in the field of the word movement. Number two, the increased word of the Lord. Paul's intensive word preaching movement resulted in amazing things happening in the fields. After verse 11, we read that the demonic exorcisms and healings and various diseases were witnessed through Paul. The seven sons of Sceva, the priest in Judah, attempted to cast out the demons in Jesus' name, but was ridiculed and beaten to death. Verses 14 to 16 reads, Seven sons of a Jewish high priest named Sceva were doing this, but the evil spirit answered them, I know Jesus, I know Paul, but who are you? And the man in whom was evil leaped on him, mastered all of them, and overpowered them so that they fled out that house naked and wounded. We can see that the, e the demons know as the demons itself. Jesus I know, and Paul I recognize, but who are you? So there was a time when I was praying, saying, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, may you flee. But the assistant pastors who were next to me were saying, go out, go out, with no power. And those assistant pastors were kicked. The demons know well that you will give up. That you will visit them and then give up. It knows all of those things. That's why it will not go. Jesus I know and Paul I recognize, but who are you? We must not have a faith that is mocked by these demons. The gospel is not to be imitated. The walk of faith 
it cannot be imitated. You can trick a fake flower into looking like a real flower, but it has no fragrance or fruit. It is a fake flower, even if you say that it is real. It is not important to go to church, but to believe correctly. The kingdom of God is not just words, but power. After verse 17 of the main text today, we can look at the book of Ephesians, and it shows that the Jews and Greeks living in Ephesus witnessed the events involving the sons of Sceva and experienced a spiritual awakening. They abandoned their double-minded faith and returned as true believers. And furthermore, many who had practiced black magic brought their books and burned them in front of everyone. And these books contain chants, spells, and explanations of magic created by the Ephesian sorcerers. These books were so valuable that they were referred to as the Ephesian documents. The value of the book burned was estimated to be 50,000 silver coins, and at that time, a laborer's daily wage was only one silver coin. And what does this tell us? It signifies that the stronghold of Satan was established in the book of Ephesians was crumbled. May the partisans at home be crumbled down. It underlies that the importance of everyone bearing the gospel and the significance of the continuous ministry of the word movement. Paul's ministry at the Hall of Trainus had a significant impact not only in the region of Ephesus, but also behind it and beyond it. But by continuously conducting the ministry of the word of the word at the Hall of Trainus, the message of the gospel spread throughout Asia Minor with Ephesus at its center. People from various regions gathered in Ephesus where they heard Paul's teaching at the Hall of Trainus. In other words, they heard the gospel and were transformed and went to establish the churches in their own regions. Through this ministry at the Hall of Trainus, several churches were founded in Asia Minor, including the Church of Colossians, which was one of the seven churches in Asia. In a nutshell, the power of the word has manifested itself in the field. In verse 20, it reads, the power of the Lord's word was at work and people were strongly influenced. This means that the scene was transformed by the power of the Lord's word. Darkness was shattered and the uniqueness of the gospel, which proclaims Jesus as Christ and the proclaim and the ultimate problem to the solution for all men, only Christ, the only kingdom of God, and only the spiritual flow filled with the Holy Spirit, the baptism of light, and the stronghold of Christ is firmly established in the field. In the name of the Lord, may this life-transforming dynamism be filled in your lives for the second half of 2023, this is the conclusion. There's a term called Paksiri Kids. Paksiri is a famous South Korean female golfer who in 1998 won the U.S. Women's Open with remarkable determination. Even playing barefoot, which deeply moved the entire nation. At the same time, South Korea was in the midst of the IMF financial crisis, and her victory provided significant comfort to the people. Many aspiring golfers began their careers inspiring by, inspired by players like Park Siri, 
and they too made sensational achievements by entering the U.S. LPGA Tour and winning numerous titles. So they are referred to as the Puxeri Kids. This week, I was stuck in the plane for 23 hours. But it was the grace of God that I was not tired, but I had strength. It is by the grace of God. All of our team. When we preach the gospel, we are restored of the five powers. Amen. So when you restore the field, everything is restored. The five powers will be restored. We should spiritually aspire to become the apostle kids. Just as apostle Paul lived a life centered solely on Christ and carried out the covenant driven passion of the field. We too should work towards for the restoration of the spiritual field. I pray in the name of the Lord that may all believers of Yeoman Church become like this, standing as the key players of the team of three and the three movements. Let us pray. Dear Father God, may all of our believers be the main figures of the Tyrannus Hall. And upon the field, may we be able to know that God is alive and be able to win the spiritual battle. In Jesus Christ's name we pray, amen.